be that as it may, I mean, my main contention is this, that you would like to believe that the American public is more sort of left inclined than its leaders, its power system. I but I would put to you that Americans are fundamentally a conservative people. I'm conservative too. Uh, in, in fact, I, I don't express my opinion. There's massive evidence on people's attitudes and on social and political issues. It's rather, rather consistently both political parties are well to the right of the population. Healthcare is one example, uh, but the same is true on international issues and so on. Maybe if that's the case, and the public you say is behind many of the positions you hold, maybe the reason that the public isn't necessarily giving full voice to support for you is that they find it difficult to live with some of the things you say about the United States. And your critics say that you consistently exaggerate the crimes committed, as you call them, crimes committed by the United States, and you airbrush away the failings of America's enemies. And the facts are the opposite. I underestimate U.S. and British crimes, and I overestimate the crimes of enemies. Well, let's take an but, example. I mean, but, back but, in but, 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 let me go back to one statement. You said the reason the American people don't uh, vote for my position, they don't have that option, even if they knew what it was. That's not one of the options. Uh, the system is designed so that you have two choices within business-run systems, uh, and the choices are a little different, and sometimes it makes some sense to pick one rather than the other. And both choices happen to be uh, uh, off the main spectrum of American opinion on many crucial issues. So there's but, no choice. But language is important. And when you, and this is back in 69, when your main focus was activism against the Vietnam War, you wrote, what is needed in the U.S. is a kind of denazification. That's, that's a very common quote from the right wing. Do you know the context? Well, look at the context. Uh, it, it was in 1967, the um, Chicago Museum of Science, very well-known institution, had an exhibit which was a diorama of a Vietnamese village in which children could stand on the outside and shoot guns into the Vietnamese village. Okay. A group of mothers protested, and the New York Times had an editorial denouncing the mothers because they were, taking, they were taking away the fun from the kiddies who were having a great time shooting guns into a Vietnamese village. That's the context. But, and but commenting on that, I said, you have to ask whether what the United States needs is dissent or denazification. And I would say the same uh, thing yeah, today in that in same, same context. You went on. In that same context. Yeah, yeah. you did the go context, on to say in, my, in your opinion. Where, where, you, where you pick it up from you know, the right-wing blogs and so on, or even the liberal blogs, all the context is eliminated. But if you put the context back in, I think the sentence is appropriate. Well, is there still a mindset in power in the United States, which in your view is akin to requiring as a response quote unquote denazification. With that context, yes, I'd repeat it. Has the country changed enormously? It's changed through activism, uh, which, which has tremendously changed the country. It's become a much more civilized country. Uh, the same here, through large scale activism. Uh, its roots, you know, it goes way back, but the major roots were the activism of the 60s, mostly young people, which uh, changed the country. But, but sticking with foreign policy then, would you say there is um, a, a morality maybe to America's presence and, and fight in Afghanistan, which was not no. there in, Afghan in, in Vietnam? Because no. Obama calls it quote-unquote, a war of necessity. And he says to Americans, we are fighting this war precisely because your security in the United States is at stake. Al-Qaeda, bin Laden, the Taliban who protected them, these are people who want to destroy our way of life, and we have to combat them. And, and he's not doing it. In fact, he's radicalizing the population. Uh, with, but we could, we could ask a factual question. Does this contribute to the defense of the United States? But that's not the moral question. I mean, you know, the Nazis could have said that it 
contributes to the security of but Germany to conquer, to mean, conquer 9, France. 11 happened, and we know that it happened because the Taliban sheltered militant jihadi well, groups actually, led by bin Laden who planned it from Afghanistan. That is a fact, and well, as it, a result... It, it's, it's, I mean, it's my belief, too, and it's the belief of the FBI, too, but it's only a belief. As they pointed out, eight, the head of the FBI, eight months after the invasion of Afghanistan, uh, was queried by the press, Washington Post, and uh, said, well, we believe that the plot was hatched in Afghanistan and implemented in the United Arab Emirates and in Germany, but we can't prove it. That's after the most intensive investigation in history. Secondly, Afghanistan was not uh, uh, invaded and attacked to overthrow the Taliban. That was, uh, came a couple of weeks later. Uh, it, was, it was attacked because uh, uh, George Bush uh, uh, demanded that the Taliban hand over Osama bin Laden and associates to the United States. The Taliban vacillated. They indicated they might consider it if there was evidence provided. So but the United States refused to provide evidence. So you wouldn't accept that what happened and continues to happen in Afghanistan with the American and, and NATO presence is in any sense just? a just war, a just conflict? I think it's a very weak argument. Basically not. But uh, no, it, in it, fact, it, it, if, it, if it you want to know the truth, I think it's one of the most immoral acts in modern history. One of the most immoral. And let me explain why. That, if you look back at October 2001, uh, the, uh, uh, the United States uh, invaded Afghanistan because the Taliban refused to hand over suspects without evidence. Okay, now actually they had a right to do that. You're supposed to provide evidence if you want extradition. Uh, at the time, uh, the estimates were, uh, there were about five million Afghans on the verge of starvation. And the estimates were uh, that if the United States bombed, it might go to two and a half million more. In fact, the aid aid agencies, which were forced to leave uh, when the bombing was announced, bitterly condemned the bombing. Now, take a look, at, it's across the board. Almost all of them bitterly condemned the bombing. And many leading anti-Taliban Afghans, including U.S. favorites, very harshly condemned the bombing. I mean, you said millions might die within weeks. I mean, That's, which, I was reading from the New York Times report of the official it, estimates. Obviously it didn't happen, but... but, but look, to but say that it didn't happen is irrelevant. We, look, it, it, when Khrushchev put missiles in Cuba, it didn't lead to a nuclear war. And I suppose some party hack would say, well, you know, it was fine to put missiles in Cuba. It wasn't. It was criminally insane. If the worst didn't happen, that doesn't change the conditions of the choices. The point um, I'm trying to get to, perhaps it's best put in a simple sense, by going to another internet uh, question from a viewer uh, of Hard Talk. Raphael Sentimore in, in Canada says quite simply, Mr. Chomsky, do you think the Obama administration should leave Afghanistan right now? Uh, it can't be answered in that form, because it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what the Afghans think. Invading armies have no rights. They have responsibilities. The responsibil prime responsibility is to pay, attention to, the, uh, to, to pay attention to the opinions of those you're attacking. Now, if you look at the debate over Afghanistan, Strikingly, one voice is missing. What do the Afghans think? Well, you know, it's not that easy to determine, but it's not totally impossible either. Uh, for example, there happens to be an Afghan peace movement, uh, which is pretty significant. Uh, their voice is totally missing.